are fairly, fairly flat, you'll see that there's uh, a slight decrease there, but there's, you know, inconsequential, we've got a decrease in health insurance and um, a slight increase in some, some new equipment you'll see that we put into place there as well. But all in all, it was a fairly flat coverage for the services. Same thing with the nurse services on the next page. Slight budget difference, again, uh, you're going to see throughout this budget the decrease in the health insurance and some other slight adjustments on uh, nursing supplies as well as software. Speed services, uh, slight decrease of $2,300. Uh, the savings in professional services, and again, uh, special education, speed services, uh, that's a snapshot in time. Obviously, we, we don't know what students may move in or move out next year, but we take a snapshot in time for the services that are needed, and that's what's budgeted for, and we, we try to get those as closely as possible. The next one, 2160 and 2190, uh, physical therapy and occupational therapy and adaptive PE. Um, you'll see that that is fairly uh, flat line in that. We've revisited the budget um, since we presented it to the school board. And in that line of adaptive PE, we've got $20,000 budgeted. We feel pretty confident that those services are adequately met through the physical therapy and occupational therapy. So I, I, we're recommend, I'm recommending that the school board and budget committee revisit that line and reduce that $15,000. Okay, so I think that we're, 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 we've looked at every um, place in your budget and try to get it as, as close as possible and be responsible as possible. And this is one of the areas that we feel like we can, we can do an additional $15,000 reduction from all we presented so far. So that's my recommendation to the budget committee to all consider that. 2210 and 2211 testing services. <coughs> Excuse me. The decrease is based on actual testing. Uh, so again, we're, we're looking at each line and, and trying to be as responsible as possible to make our, our best conservative guess as we can. Next is library librarian services. Everything from salary to books to software, uh, actual cost. And you'll see there is a slight increase in that, uh, trying to make our library um, a, a more friendly and, and useful place for all of our students. So that's, that's a slight increase in, in those services. Next function is, is school board. Uh, and you'll see a budget difference of approximately $3,000 decrease. Uh, there's a decrease in the SAU assessment for next year. Uh, that's already been approved, so there's a decrease there. There's a slight increase of about $5,000 for legal services and uh, audit expenses. The $5,000 in legal expenses, we are, uh, as you know, there's some, some discussion about the withdrawal process from SAU 56 for Rollinsburg, and I think you know that, that Summersworth has already approved that process. So uh, we're anticipating that there may be some legal guidance that we may need, so we increase that line by $5,000. School administration, there's a slight increase of about $2,400. Uh, there's a 2% salary increase as well, and, and that includes the office clerical, principal, clerical sub, things like postage, travel, supplies, uh, anything to do with our administrative office. Property and liability insurance. We, we've, uh, like I said, we've got a few with uh, insurance, um, health insurance and liability insurance. And this is the uh, primex rate that was quoted to us. So there's a slight decrease there as well. We'd be very pleased if that trend would continue over the next few years, but I can't promise that. Function 26, 21, custodial services. Um, you'll see an a increase of $6,400 there. There's a 2% salary increase. Um, there's a health insurance savings there that we're going to be realizing for next year. 
as well as some equipment and equipment replacement that you can see in there. Everything from uh, leaf blowers, hand drills, um, water heaters for the kitchen. You can see some different things in there that are needed. We, we try to uh, be responsible and, and take care of the facilities and, and those are our equipment pieces that are needed. Utilities, as, as we all know, the, the uh, utilities, telephone, oil, uh, is uh, obviously increasing. This is, uh, we based it off of a running average and tried to look at the, the past history and the actuals. Uh, so we've got an increase for telephone and oil, and uh, that, that's demonstrated in the $6,000 increase in the budget for the upcoming year. In maintenance, uh, the approved budget for the present year, you can see at $167,000, uh, we're bringing forward a budget difference of a decrease of $70,000 in this line. Uh, if you read down through the notes, you can see this Part of the decrease is the $93,000 Warner who was taken out as passed last year. And then there's a number of things from, from the playground to ceramic tile to maintaining and repairing the cupola uh, and some other things that, uh, again, trying to maintain the facilities in a responsible manner. Uh, and we still got a decrease there of so. Equipment maintenance, we've got an increase of $10,000. And again, there's a number of things there from, from the fire alarm, fireproofing, the stage curtain, fire extinguishers, a lot of different things like that that, that are, are necessary to make sure that the facility is taken care of and, uh, and is safe for everyone. So uh, that's a slight increase of $10,000. Transportation is your first student contract, uh, which is, is demonstrating an increase in that contract of approximately $6,000. But there's a decrease in special ed transportation of approximately $41,000. So that's why we've got a decrease of $34,000 looking at our transportation contracts. And, and again, uh, through special education, looking at the snapshot in time and, and what we have to provide for uh, services for our students. Other benefits, uh, the retirement benefits, we've got two features, two features that uh, the benefits for retirement are taken in there. So you've got a budget difference of $52,000. Uh, there, there may be, I say may be, some uh, savings uh, corresponding with that next year uh, because we're obviously hiring the staff to replace. Um, so there, there could be some corresponding savings, but uh, we'll have to see what kind of, um, obviously what kind of candidate who we get to work. And then the transfer to capital reserve is, is self-explanatory uh, on the next slide. The default budget, uh, as it stands, is uh, about $200,000 lower than the regular, the proposed budget. Uh, there's a number of things that are, are we're not going to get it. We get the default budget. We try to be responsible and get the proposed budget as tight as possible and, and still be able to uh, maintain facilities and, and move some things forward. You can see going down through here that, that the default budget does not include things like the literacy interventionist position. Uh, it does not incre include increased speed and, and capability of the internet access. Things like uh, library additional furniture, the legal services, custodial replacement of equipment to stay on a responsible cycle, uh, and grounds maintenance and maintenance repairs. Those, those obviously are, are not included. Many of the things that are not included in the fall budget. So we really feel like the, the uh, proposed budget has been um, reviewed and, and, and scoured uh, down to each individual line, and, and it's a what we feel is a very responsible proposal. Would you like me to go through the other Warren articles while I'm up here? Okay. 
So Article 6 is the, the um, collective bargaining agreement. We recently reached a, an agreement that was ratified by both the, uh, the teaching and paraprofessional union in the building as well as the school board. Um, one of the main goals for, you'll see on the next page, the, the main goal for the uh, school board this year was to make sure that we get all of our paraprofessionals on staff. Uh, because of the contracts that, that weren't passed in the past and the contract that was passed last year, there were many of our paraprofessionals that weren't even on the correct step. So bringing them up to the correct step was, was priority one in many negotiations. And this, this proposal um, has that. In addition to that, uh, it's a 1% salary increase on each step for the teachers. Uh, and it's a total of $61,000 uh, for the foreign articles. So, like I said, it, it, it accomplishes the main goal of the school board, which was to get all of the paraprofessionals on staff. <laughs> Article 7 is the expended trust fund uh, specifically set for tuition. Each year, uh, in, in your budget, in our budget, we have to budget for middle school and high school students. And again, it's, it's approximately $10,600 per student. We try to be as responsible and as close as possible. But if we have um, 10 move-ins next year, then obviously that's $100,000 that is not in your budget. So what, what we're trying to do with this expendable trust is to slowly build it up so we can budget more closely to the number. Um, and then if we have two movements, five movements, ten movements, we'll be able to uh, tap the expendable trust in the future instead of taking it out of your uh, regular ed budget, which is basically this building. So at the present time, there is one dollar in, in that expendable trust, and we'd like to put up to $22,000 in that. And again, this is uh, from uh, unexpended funds if there are any at the end of this, this year. Article 8 is building improvement capital reserve. Uh, presently there is $178,472 in that, in that function. Um, that's a, a uh, from my past experience, that's a expendable trust that uh, goes quickly when it's needed. If a roof goes, if a boiler goes, if something like that, a lot of, a lot of times those are very large ticket items. Uh, so having a healthy expendable trust there is, is very important. Uh, that's why we're proposing to put up to $75,000. And again, this is from uh, fund balance and unexpended fund, should there be any of the the year. And then the last is a Article 9, is a proposed more article on um, developing a withdrawal study committee. Uh, as you know, uh, Summersworth has already started this process of withdrawing from SAE 56. Uh, the discussion at the board level has been to keep all of Rollinsburg's options open. Uh, it's a responsible piece to develop a committee, gather all of your information, and then you'll have all of the options available to you to make a, a, an informed decision as a community um, what, the, what the end result would be. So that's the reason you find behind that one. And with that, that's, uh, that's our budget. Quickly in a nutshell, and, and we can have to answer any questions. trust that we just heard about, and I wonder if the school board has a cap that they think they would like to reach in that fund, you know, in the years forward. What, 
at some point, do you think that you would stop asking for that? You know, because you think you've got enough of a balance and expend of trust. Are you, are you talking specifically for... Well, the one for the, to handle a tuition increases. Tuition increases. Yeah, we had. I believe, I believe that we, the number we discussed was five students worth of tuition, so. Which is roughly? Approximately, let's say, 55,000. Yeah, yeah. Oh, I agree. And if, you know, it, it fluctuates year to year, yeah. so that would be my ballpark. Yeah, thank you. It's, it's a good idea because once you reach that, of course, it allows you to keep your operating budget just for what you think are your operating expenses and not some of these. Right. Currently, we put some C students in the budget, so once we get to a comfortable level, like five students, we'll remove that. Um, I think we removed one or one less this year, is that correct, from last year. Um, so hopefully we get some money in here, and then next year, you know, we, we probably gradually remove, you know, until we're zero. Thank you. Yeah. Question number two. So the, the decrease in health benefits, which I think was nine, something percent, and while I understand that there may have been an overall, an overall decrease in health, it was probably also briefing the fact that last year's collective bargaining agreement, the teachers agreed to go on a, a health plan that was less expensive. Is it, is, doesn't that explain part of that decrease as well? Uh, it, it, it doesn't necessarily explain the decrease, uh, but you're absolutely right that any kind of, of uh, gain that you made in collective bargaining agreements last year, you're gaining that portion again this year as you will into the future of any decrease in health insurance. Um, but the, the minus 9%, uh, that has a lot to do with staff being responsible in, in, in the, you know, the smart shopper or the health insurance. Uh, it's from my office doing professional development and educating. I mean, it's basically being a smart consumer uh, along with we, our usage rate has, has diminished. Um, some of it's good luck uh, and, and you know, keeping everybody healthy. But yes, any of those, any of those decreases obviously would benefit from that increase in the coming years as well for the collective bargaining Thank you. 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 Another piece 
piece of this is that uh, I, I touched on it a little bit when I was going through the budget. Uh, we, we try to put things in the budget that will maintain the facility, extend the life of the facility, and in the long run save the town uh, money. If, if those things are not in the budget, uh, if, if some of them aren't included in the fall budget, then it might increase the need to tap into your potential trust. So that's why it's, it's uh, you know, it's hopefully the, the more we can take care of along the way within your budget, the less we will need to tap into your potential trust. I have a question for the budget committee. I have questions on Article 9. Do you want me to give someone else a chance to speak or ask those now?
uh, approved the study committee. The city council has approved the study committee. Uh, and they are in the process of appointing members to the study committee. Uh, so their, their withdrawal study committee will probably start functioning um, late January, early February. So, you know, if you're thinking they're going to get a jump on, it, it, the, the processes are, are going to, there's, there's nothing speedy about this process. It's not like they can finish make a decision um, prior to Rollinsford going through it as well. So um, again, it will be happening at the same time. My second question is, what would be the result if our town fails to pass the warrant article suggesting withdrawal coalition? At that point in time, nothing would change. Nothing would change in what way? Uh, if, 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 if you uh, brought it forward to the voters, and again, this is just hypothetical, uh, and the voters turn it down for Rollinsburg to pull out of SA 56, then you would still be part of SA 56. Even if someone's voted to withdraw. That's what I'm trying to get at. If it's what happens in that event. If I could, Paul, I would just, I, it may not clarify any more or not. So, Summersworth initiated the process to withdraw from SAU 56. If they are successful in doing that, we are SAU 56. Rollinsford becomes SAU 56. We are also starting a withdrawal study so that, um, so, whatever plan comes up with, one of us may remain SAU 56. <coughs> One of us may, one of us may not be part of it, depending on, on, on what is decided by each committee and what goes forward and what is best for, for each. And we'd like to have what's best for each, uh, each entity, the city or the town. Um, so we may have the name SAU 56. Summersworth may have the, the name SAU 56. Essentially, SAU 56 will probably be comprised of one or the other, rather than both. And then the other entity has to go forward with a plan for what they're going to do to provide uh, 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 SAU, you know, supervisory um, uh, benefits of the, uh, the services that they have. I guess my question is sort of along the line is, let's assume someone's going to vote to remove themselves from SAU 56. We remain in SAU 56. Is there, isn't there a building that belongs to SAU 56? Well, that's, that, that'll be part of the, the study committee to, to come up with options for all of those scenarios. Remember, the, the, the vote to uh, pull out of an SAU, you can't kick somebody out of the SAU. So you, you can't kick somebody's worth out, somebody's worth can't kick you out. So the only vote would be for, for them voting for them to pull out. If they, let's just take that situation. If Summersworth were to pull out of the SAU, then Rollinsburg would be SAU 56. And part of the charge for their committee and your committee would be what does SAU 56 look like? What's the building? What's the staff? What's the, I mean, all of those things would have to come out within your, your study committee. Um, obviously, if, if Summersworth were to pull out and Rollinsburg was SAU 56, there's a, I would anticipate that there would be a lot of changes, uh, you know, in where it's located, what the staffing would be, uh, all of those those options would be taken care of within the study committee. Now, the other option on the other side, let's say that Rollinsburg pulled out or would pull out, um, the study committee would have to come up with options about what does that mean. Do you create your own SAU? Do you contract services with somebody else? Do you join another SAU? Uh, so that's going to be the type of options that the study committee will work for. Thank you. I guess it just seems to be a very, very short timeline somehow. That's all I'm thinking of. It'll be, it'll be the entire, um, it'll be the entire 1920 school year uh, at the very least. Thank you. Well, 
Yeah, remember that, that it doesn't necessarily need to look the same. So, and, and again, I'm, this is all hypothetical. Right? This is up to the study committee to bring this forward here. Uh, but the present operating budget is $1.3 million. Uh, and again, remember that's with a full-time staff. Uh, technically, you need the services of a superintendent, business administrator, and special special ed director. What those services look like, again, your study committee will come back with options. Does that mean you're contracting the service out? Do you have a superintendent for two days a week? Do you contract your business office out? Those are all options that will come uh, forward from the withdrawal committee. So again, you know, if, if, if Rollinsburg were to pull out, my guess is that you wouldn't have a $1.3 million SAU anymore. Um, but, you know, it's not up to me to decide, that's up to your study committee and then ultimately the vote is wrong.